Hey kiddos, it's Mrs. Visconti, and we're going over lesson 4.7 for math today. We're going to talk about the shifting of digits when you're multiplying by decimals. So we're going to start off real simple, and we're looking for patterns. Remember, most of math is looking for a pattern in the way that the numbers are either multiplied or divided or just a, a pattern in general. So we're going to start with a very simple multiplication problem here. Let's start with 213 times 1. If you're yelling at me, Mrs. Visconti, that's super easy. You're right, because it is simply 213, because anything times 1 is that number. So you can multiply into the, the millions with 1 and simply know that it is the same number again. All right, so we have 213. But now we're going to be multiplying by a decimal. Yesterday we started multiplying by decimals, and we learned the hop. We hop in, and whatever the decimal place we have is the decimal place we will have in our answer. So if we already know that 213 times 1 is 213, then we know 213 times 1 is 213, except we're going to add that hop, and we're going to put a decimal point in here. So we have 21 and 3 tenths. And we can do the same thought process here. We know that 213 times 1 is 213, but we are going to add two hops, one for each decimal place. A decimal place is any place after the decimal. And so that means we are going to hop twice, 1 and 2. And that means this number is 2 and 13 hundredths. It might be a little hard to see my decimal point there, but it is there. So I wanted to notice the pattern here. Whenever we multiply by a 1, we get the number itself. But then when we multiply by a 1 tenth, we hop one decimal place over. And now that we have two places, we hop two decimal places over. So we are constantly shifting our digits to the right. We're actually moving the digits. So if we write them out on a line, we have 213. And then the next one, we actually have going to the right. Our digits leave the hundreds place, and now we have 21 and, and we actually have to draw out a new decimal place, and that is 0.3 or 3 tenths. And then for our last one, we're also going to keep moving to the right. We're actually going to abandon, I'm going to use that big word, we're going to abandon the hundreds and the tens place because now we are in the ones, and then we go into the hundredths place in our decimals. So I want you to keep that in mind when we are multiplying by decimals, we are shifting the digits to the right. If you think about it, you're moving the decimal inwards, so that moves to the left, but our digits are actually moving to the right. All right, let's look at this again with a different number. And this time I have our lines all drawn out for us. So I have $567 times 100th. So I want you to think about this. We're going to be putting the digits into their places. How many new places will we need after the decimal? If you said two, you're correct. We're going to have two new places after the decimal. Why? Because this number here has two places after the decimal. So let's go ahead, we're going to abandon the hundreds place, abandon the tens place, and we're going to shift it here. And our decimal is now between the 5 and the 6. So if I do two hops, if you need to see the hops, there's 1, 2, this is where my decimal lands. So when I rewrite my number, I'm no longer in the hundred or the tens place, but instead I've shifted to the ones and the tenth and hundredth place. So keep in mind, when we multiply by decimals, we are simply shifting our digits to the right, and we are dropping our decimal the same amount or equal amount of places after the decimal point. And so here, let's look at this pattern. I have similar digits and similar numbers, but with decimals in different places. So if I already know what four times one is, I know that it's four but I need to count my hops. I have one place and two places after the decimal. So if I'm going to go one, two, I'm putting my decimal here and drawing a zero. 
So as I keep going, let's check out this pattern here. I have a four. So I know my answer is simply going to be four, but I have one, two, and then three decimal places after the decimal. So here's one, two, three, and my decimal is here. So the pattern we notice is that in our answer, the number of decimal places after the decimal is equal to the total number of decimal places in the multiplication problem. Why did I emphasize the word total? Because we're not counting just this decimal place or just this decimal place, we're counting them together. So we need to add them together. There are two decimal places here. We need to add these together. There are one, two, and three decimal places here, meaning that our answer is going to have one, two, and three after the decimal, and this one will have one and two. All right, so I hope that that pattern starts to stand out for us as we keep going forward. Let's look at another problem. We are going to look at, again, the same number multiplied, just like we did in the first page, but this time I've written my numbers horizontally. So we know that any number times one is that number itself. So we are going to say 589. So I would like you to pay attention to the shift in the numbers and the digits in this pattern. I have 589 again, but this time I'm going to have one hop one place after the decimal. So five, eight, nine. And with one hop, this is where my decimal will be placed. I can leave it as 58 and 9 tenths, but if I'm talking about money, a lot of times we like to put that zero when we like to talk about 58 and 90 hundredths, or in money talk, $58 and 90 cents. This last one here, I have two hops, so I'm going to write 58 with the nine, but this time from the last place where that invisible decimal is, it's holding it there because if we have partials, then we place it after the decimal. We're gonna hop one and two, and now our number is five and 89 hundredths. So as you can see, the numbers are shifting to the right. Our decimal is moving inwards and leaving new place values after the decimal, see this one, the decimal's here and there are no numbers or digits in those last places. All right, let's just practice with some basic multiplication now. So this one here, I have 341 times 1 hundredth. So I know that my answer is simply gonna be 341. I'm going to count my places after the decimal. So if this is the decimal, I need to move it one and two because I need to have two places after the decimal. So my answer is three and 41 hundredths. Now this one is different because I only have a two digit number being multiplied by one hundredth. So same rule applies, 27 times one is still gonna be 27, but let's get that hop in there or those places after the decimal. So if my in invisible decimal's here waiting to be used, then we can hop one, two, so our number is now less than one. We have 27 hundredths. So notice that I have two places after the decimal, just like I have two places after the decimal in my factor up here. So one thing that I would like us to consider is that we can use the associative property when we're multiplying by multiple decimals or in this case, a whole number in a decimal. So I want you to just think about the fact that two times 0 0.1 or 1 tenth equals 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. And the reason I want you to consider this is that we can take a number like this and break it apart. So I can have over here my four times 0 0.1. Correct. I only have one place after the decimal. I have one place after the decimal and I'm multiplying it by two. Using my associative property, I can regroup using my parentheses and I'm going to group them in a way that makes more sense. So I'm going to shift or group my four times two. Put this in parentheses. And I'm going to leave my decimal out here because we will come back to it. 
inside my parentheses, I have eight. And now I simply come down to eight times one tenth, which that's an easier problem. Just like this, I can mentally multiply two times one and it's a little easier. So I now have 0 0.8 or 8 tenths as my answer. So using the associative property, we can regroup our numbers um, and work on something that makes more sense, like 2 times 4, which is 8, makes more sense. And then I multiply it by the decimal. So let's use that associative property again. This time I have two decimals that I'm multiplying, and I still want to keep in mind that one times any number is that number itself. So I can take a decimal and break it down into its factors, which makes it easier. So for this one, I'm going to break down, let's break down the two hundredths. So I have 0 0.01 or one hundredth times two, my whole number, because that's what this equals. I can break it apart. And I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.4. Let's go ahead and get our equal sign out there. Now let's regroup and put together numbers that make more sense. In this case, it's going to make more sense to put together our two decimals, 0 0.01 and 0 0.4. Multiply it by that whole number. We'll multiply it by the whole number when we're all done. Let's go ahead and group these decimals together because I know that one times four is four and I have one, two, three places after my decimal. So I have 0 0.004. I don't have three zeros after the decimal. I have three places. So I need to make sure I include my four, that digit there. So I'm going to multiply now by two. And when I come down, now I can just mentally know that four times two is eight. And I need to have my three places after the decimal. So my answer is 0 0.008 or eight thousandths in this case. All right, kiddos, I hope that this has helped regrouping your numbers to make more sense. Definitely helps you multiply when you're multiplying with decimals. And I hope that you can see the patterns in your numbers as you continue on with your work. All right. Have a great day. Bye.